Hello, let's improve our acceleration and speed by eliminating over 100 grams off our Voron 2.4. The x-axis of the Voron 2.4, at least most of the versions up until now, used two MGN9 rails. And the latest revision of this printer has now moved to a single MGN12 rail which is pretty much um, what's used on the Voron Trident. And as we can see here on this really beautiful, uh, <laughs> well-crafted Voron Trident, um, which uses the MGM-12 rail. Now, I spent a lot of time looking around and looking at the specs of the MGM-9, uh, it's, I don't quite understand why we can't use it because it can easily deal with the load. And when I take a look around elsewhere on the internet, on the web, I see many other printers, uh, self-built printers or other printer kits, where they're actually moving from MGN 12 to an MGN 9 in order to save weight and improve performance and acceleration. So I figured, why can't we do the same? We've already got all the parts we need for the most part. It won't cost a lot of extra money. It will cost some time. So let's give it a shot. So we start by fully disassembling the x-axis. As you can see here, um, I've got some other issues as well. Um, I actually had to go in. I needed to change the uh, proximity sensor. As you can tell, looking at this one, um, there's some heat damage, it's melted, um, but either way, you have to really completely disassemble this. Since we'll only be using the front facing rail, I've printed out this new carriage. Um, this carriage was uh, modified by Andrew Ellis. I've got a link um, at the video here um, where you can go and take a look, but here you can see the difference where uh, the back end, uh, which typically connects to the lower rail, uh, has been removed. Next, we need to take out the uh, extrusion with the two linear rails attached. And uh, unfortunately, that means, again, full disassembly. It turns out I actually had intentions to go in here and change at least this one top piece anyway, um, because if you look really closely just above the uh, pulley, uh, you might see a little white line there, which is an area where I damaged it uh, when I was assembling this printer. I tightened the bolt a little bit too tight, damaged the plastic. That's why that white appears there. I don't think it was structurally important, but I need to change it anyway. And then we disassemble the right side of this as well. Again, we want to fully remove the extrusion. And then go ahead and remove the bolts from the bottom that hold the extrusion in. And be careful not to let the rail carriages slide off the ends. The extrusion and the rails with all the bolts and everything else weigh about 650 grams. Each linear slide or linear rail weighs about 180 grams, 178. I'm going to say 180. The bolts and the T-nuts together these weigh 34 grams. I did take this opportunity to re-lube the rail and uh, also just run it back and forth a little bit, check to make sure it's running as smooth as you like. Uh, this seems to have either broken in a little bit since new. It's definitely a lot smoother than when they were brand new when I first installed it. And here I'm installing the new carriage. And after the bolts are all tightened, just checking to make sure there's no play. Uh, you can't wiggle it around. It rolls really nice and smooth. When I try to, uh, 
I don't know, flex it, pull it forward, push it backwards, whatever the case may be, it's on there tight. There's just no play. It's really, really solid with just a single rail. When reconnecting the belts, make sure the same number of the teeth appear on both the right and the left side. Make sure and count them. And this time, to protect the uh, probe, I'm using polyamide tape, uh, just a single piece here to cover the front of the induction proximity sensor. And then we just go ahead and assemble the rest of the print head. And then a quick test to make sure everything's solid, make sure it's moving nicely, the belts are all okay, you've rerouted all the belts. Notice there's really no play here. I can't really rock this head front or back. Um, it's, it just seems really solid, even with the single rail. Next, go to the Voron initial setup guide. You'll just want to check to make sure that the Z end stop pin and the locations are okay. That really shouldn't have changed. You also want to do the inductive probe check just to make sure that's working, especially in this case, because I just wired a new one. I also went ahead and did the accuracy check. Not a bad idea. Uh, you can skip through here, and then you want to go ahead and work on your first quad gantry level. Again, because we just completely replaced a major piece here. And go ahead and do the Z offset adjustment. You absolutely will have to do this as well. So to test the impact, I decided to measure the resonance using Clipper. Now, when I started on this project, my expectation was that I really wouldn't see much happen on the X. I would mainly be seeing results on the Y axes. So these are the results of the measurement of the X axes. The left uh, represents the measurements taken before modifying, uh, or rather removing the rail. And if you take a look, uh, the recommended shaper was uh, MZV, and it was at 48 hertz. However, taking a look on the right, um, we can see it actually jumped up to 58, or a little bit over 58 hertz, and the shaper actually changed, or the recommended shaper, is now ZV, which is a much lighter weight shaper than MZV is. It's about the lightest that you can get. And so this is actually really quite a positive change, um, a bigger impact than I was expecting on the x-axis. In addition, when you look at the left, uh, the recommended acceleration rate is less than or equal 6,800 millimeters per second squared. Taking a look at the right with the change, it's now uh, 12,000 or below in terms of acceleration. So that's a huge change. Now, taking a look at the y-axis where I was expecting the big changes, again, taking a look at the left, uh, the previous um, shaper was the two hump and the acceleration was at about 2100 millimeters per second squared at 44 or 45 hertz which is really not that great however taking a look at the right uh, we now uh, dropped into MZV as far as the recommended shaper um, it is now um, 42 hertz uh, between 8 and frankly almost 10 um, hertz larger and now the acceleration is 5200 or below millimeters per second squared and again it's not quite where I want it to be but that's actually a really big change on top of it if you compare to left to right on the left side you'll also notice there was a secondary really large hump there um, when we take a look at the changes to the right, that extra hump has disappeared, which probably is the reason why we got to move from the two hump shaper to the MZV. One of the claimed issues of using two linear rails on the X axes is that they're really hard to align. And because of this, they cause problems with your bed mesh. So just for comparison's sake, this is my bed mesh prior to the change. Notice the variance is 0.2150. This is the bed mesh 
after removing the rail and the extra screws and it's now dropped to 0.16 in terms of variance. So this is actually really quite an improvement. I didn't think I had a problem aligning the rails and I'm still not sure that's really what happened here. I'm not sure I can explain it, but this is definitely significantly better. Now there's a chance this is due to the new inductive probe. So with this new Onram probe, I did notice a difference in terms of the readings. And although it took a while, I had a heat soak for an hour and a half. This is the very first time I actually hit a standard deviation of zero. And remember also the measurement distance of this probe is five millimeters versus the seven, which was the previous model. Anyway, it seems to be a little more accurate, a little more stable. I don't know if it's because the other one was heat damaged or not, but again, I was never able to achieve this, and this might explain why the bed looks better. So the biggest question of them all is, how did this impact printing? And so I doubled the acceleration, and I've been able to hit higher speeds, and this is my very first print. So obviously there's still a little bit of tuning required here, but this is actually quite a good print for a first attempt. Uh, I will be making some adjustments and some tuning. Um, I'm going to go through Andrew Ellis's guide um, really all over again, starting from beginning to end. And I'm pretty sure once I'm done that this will actually look even better. But as it is right now, I'm actually quite happy with this in this light. And as usual, if you found this video useful, please click subscribe. And thank you for watching.